copy of God's uh, written word, we have Bibles, New Testaments, uh, this, uh, this here Gospel of John, a good introduction to, uh, to reading the Bible, uh, you'd like to have a copy of God's written word that's freely offered to you, please come and ask for one. But of course, um, if you have any questions, uh, uh, do feel free to come and ask them. Uh, we don't have the answers to all your questions, I don't doubt, but uh, uh, we do have the answer uh, to the most important question, and that is one that was asked by a man in the Bible. He said, in great fear and trembling, he said, what must I do to be saved? And the answer was given to him clearly, simply and distinctly, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So if you like a Bible, you've got a question, uh, like somebody to pray for you for whatever reason at all, then uh, I would be only too happy uh, to do that for you. So as I see, we are here and to bring the Lord Jesus Christ to you, to uh, tell you about the Savior, only Savior that there is, no other mediator, says the Bible, between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. He came into the world not to make you healthy, wealthy, prosperous. He came into the world to save sinners. Man's greatest need to be reconciled to God. And you can only be reconciled to God through His Son, through His chosen and appointed mediator, Jesus Christ. God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself, and as His ambassador here this afternoon, I declare to you, or rather bid you this afternoon, be ye reconciled to God. That is a possibility. Why? Because, well, God has made provision for sinners. And of course, well, that's what we all are. We are, says God, we are conceived in sin, we are born in sin, we live and we die in sin unless, by the grace of God, we are reconciled to God. We are at enmity, naturally speaking, in our natural born state and condition. We are, we come into the world at enmity against God, hostile to God, at war with God. And so that's why we need to be reconciled to God. And the only way you can be reconciled to God is through Jesus Christ, whom I declare to you here this afternoon in the city of Dundee. God has wonderfully, no pressure on God, no compulsion on God's part, out of his mere good pleasure, God has gone to great lengths. God has done this wonderful thing in making provision for sinful men and women, sending his son into the world, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, gave him up to the death of the cross, had him crucified, dead and buried, raised again from the dead in order that through faith, in the way of faith, only in the way of faith, not by works of righteousness which you have done, faith and faith alone, grace alone, faith alone, Christ alone. That's our Reformation war cry. Grace alone, scripture alone, grace alone, faith alone, Christ alone, apart from any works of yours or mine. We are reconciled to God when we believe in Jesus. Whosoever believeth shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But of course, it's down to God himself as to who believes. 
is God's choosing, not man's choosing. Jesus, in the same context, where he says, for God so loved the world, uh, Jesus also, there in that same chapter, tells us, ye must be born again. And to be born again, of course, well, that, that signifies, that's a, a miracle, a supernatural act of God, born of God, says the Bible, not of the will of man, not man's choosing, and not, not of man who runs, not man's working, but a work of God in the soul of a man or woman in hearing the gospel. This is the very means that God uses to bring this miracle about. This that uh, so many people are disappointed with, so many people are complaining about. You've got your local ambassadors, the man with the forked tongue. He comes uh, with his lies to the police once again. Not, uh, not satisfied that his case has been thrown out of court once. He's back again complaining and carping as many, many others are about the wonderful preaching of the gospel, the very means by which God brings about this miracle of the new birth, that is, a man or woman being born again. That is God putting his life and his love into the souls of men and women. They hear the gospel. They believe the gospel. They turn from their sins. They put their full faith, confidence in Jesus Christ. They're reborn, made new creatures, reconciled to God in the way of faith, in trust in uh, Jesus Christ, confidence in Jesus Christ the Son of God. I commend him to you. He's a wonderful Savior. That nature in which you were conceived and born, out of which comes sin and only sin alone. I hope, I pray, I don't know if you know, but God has chosen a certain number of people before he created the world. He chose a certain number of people who would hear the gospel, believe the gospel, and be saved and spend eternity with God. I hope you are, Dundee, I hope you are one of those chosen people. My sheep, Jesus calls them, not goats. The goats, he says, they don't hear his voice, they don't follow him. But he says, my sheep, they hear my voice. They hear my voice and they follow me Nonsense. and I give unto them Nonsense. eternal life and they shall never perish that's his sheep that's the chosen ones God's chosen ones I do hope you're one of them what would the evidence be that you're one of God's chosen one of Jesus sheep well it would be that you would hear the gospel listen to it hearken to it believe it and be saved that would be the only evidence that you are one of God's chosen, one of Jesus' sheep. It's all down to the potter. It's all down to God himself. You see, he's the potter and we're the clay. And the potter, of course, well, he does what he wants with the sheep. He, for, he forms with the clay. He takes lumps of clay and he makes out of them what he wants. Well, because he's the potter. It's down to his choosing as to how he forms the clay. Now listen. Listen, will you, uh, to what uh, the Bible says. Therefore he hath mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will he hardeneth. And then, of course, well, he goes on to say, hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath, to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? He makes, he takes the clay and he molds it and he shapes it. He makes it as he pleases to do so. And some, he makes vessels, they're, they're for, some are for honor, 
That is to be brought to a knowledge of God, uh, live with God, dwell with God, and, and, and dwell with God uh, for all eternity. But there's other vessels that he makes to dishonor. They're made for destruction. So you see, your eternal destiny lies in the hands of God. It's what he's made you. It's what he's predestined you for. Some he's predestined for everlasting life, for heaven, for eternity, be with God. Others he has predestined, he has predestined to be disapproved, to be rejected, that is, to be passed by. Well, I don't know which you are. I, I don't know, you know, I don't know who those are that God has chosen uh, to be his and to be with him for all eternity. My job, my task is, I'm just the ambassador, I'm just the messenger. My job is simply to tell everybody and anybody who will hear, who will listen to me, the wonderful news of the gospel, how a man, a woman can be reconciled to God. And those, and those the Bible tells me, that those whom God has chosen, God, those whom God has appointed to eternal life, well, they will hear, they will listen, they will take heed to what I say, and they will believe, they will repent of their sin, turn from it, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And they will dwell with God in time and for all eternity. God loves them. Jacob have I loved, but Esau I have hated. So which are you? Are you listening? Are you hearing? The voice of God, the voice of the Savior, the voice of the Good Shepherd, the voice of Jesus. Are you listening, hearkening? Not to my voice, but His. Are you hearing another voice? The voice of the Savior calling you apart, calling you to repent, calling you to believe, calling you to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, because that's the way, the only way. Back to God from the dark path of sin. It's not of you, not of your doing, it's of God's grace. Grace through faith brings salvation. But it's the grace of God. God must put forth the grace by his grace. You will stop and listen. By His grace you will hearken. You will take heed to what God has to say. By His grace, through faith given to you, by the grace of God, you will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. That is, if you're one of, one of the shepherd's sheep. That is, if you're one of God's chosen, predestined, to eternal and to everlasting life. You see, it's not of him who wills. It's not, of, it's not of man's choice. We give you the choice whether you will receive Jesus or reject Jesus. And what will you do? Every time, every one of you, because of these sinful natures in which you are conceived and born and which you live, unless the potter the maker, God himself, that is, who formed you, unless he puts forth the power of his grace, yeah, unless he puts forth the power of his grace, well, you'll reject every time you'll reject Jesus Christ. You'll refuse to repent us. That's the only choice. That's the only choice you've got. That's the only choice you'll ever make. A fallen, sinful man, Wicked sinners as we all are born into this world will never choose God, never desire God, never seek after God. Never, never, never. Only by the grace of God do men and women seek Him. But Jesus says, He says, if you seek Him, you will find Him. Jesus bids you to do so. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the rest will be added unto you. But I bid you, I say to you, seek the Lord. And what do you say? No, not interested, no desire. Unless the potter, unless the one who formed you and made you and gave you your being, unless he puts forth his sovereign grace, 
unless he by the operation of his grace in you, you will never seek him, never desire the Savior, never choose him. He came to his own, his own people, a prize example. He came to his own. And what did they do? They were waiting for hundreds, thousands of years. They were waiting for their Messiah to come. And when he came, did they receive him? Did they choose him? Did they seek him? Did they come to him? No, he came to his own, but they did not receive him. They did not believe on his name. But those amongst them, those amongst them who did receive him, who did believe on his name, they did so because they were given grace by God. And by grace were given faith, were given the repentance and faith necessary for them to receive, to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. So it's by the it's by the power of the part of the sovereign power of God that a man or woman is saved, is reconciled to God. Not your power, not your choosing, not your decision. Because your decision, your choosing will be negative every time. You'll choose the sin rather than holiness. You'll choose the sin. You'll choose wickedness. You'll choose unbelief. You'll choose evolutionism. You'll choose scientism. You'll choose everything and all that's contrary to God, left to your own devices, your own sinful nature. Only by the grace of God, only by the grace of the potter, the master potter, your maker, God Almighty, your destiny, your eternal destiny is in his hands. And that fact alone, that fact alone, hearing that truth alone, that ought to drive you to your knees, that ought to bring you to the place of crying out to him, that he would have mercy upon you. God have mercy on me, a sinner. That ought to be. And hearing that, that you're shut up to God, that you're closed in to God, that your eternal destiny is in his sovereign hands, that you've got no choice in the matter, not at all. That ought to drive you to your knees and make you cry out to God and cry and cry out to him until he comes to you in grace, until he comes to you and gives you that which is necessary, repentance, the gift of repentance, and gives you the gift of faith. It's the gift of God. But God does give you some encouragement in his word. He says that if you seek him with all your heart, you shall find him. It's not that he's hiding from anybody. He's to be seen. He's to be seen. The invisible things of God are clearly, clearly seen by the things that he has made. There's no such a thing as an atheist on planet Earth. All men know that God is. Every man, woman and child born into this world knows that God is. But you hold. You hold down the truth and unrighteousness. You press down the truth of the knowledge of God in unrighteousness, in wickedness. Why? Because you got no desire for God. Because you don't want Him. That's the only choice you've got, sir. Yeah, just carry on, sir. That's what you were predestined for. Carry on. So like I say, friends, you know, it's not down to you. Only by the grace of God is anyone ever saved. Unless God puts forth the grace, even as you seek him, if you will. Only by grace. No guarantees. It's down to God. It's his good pleasure. He chooses. You didn't choose me, Jesus said to his disciples. I chose you. So, will God have you? Will God have you? Well, that's not down to you. That's not down to your decision. That's not down to your choosing. That's not down to your working. You can be as religious as you please. And you can work very hard at your religion. You can be very diligent. 
Muhammad's religion, the Pope's religion, the Watchtower Society, anyone you choose. You can be so very diligent, so faithful in your religion, so careful in it. But unless God, by his sovereign grace, unless it pleases God to impart grace to you, and faith to you, and repentance to you, I tell you, you'll perish in your sin. But I urge you today, I urge you today to do what God commands you to do. What does he command you to do? To repent and believe the gospel. But you say you can't. Yes, that's right, you can't. And you haven't got the desire to, but he still commands it. God commandeth every, all men everywhere to repent. He still commands it because you can't do it. That's no excuse. That doesn't take away your accountability. You're still responsible. You're responsible for your inability. You're responsible that you're, because you're unable to, unable to respond to God's commandment. You're responsible. Unless God, unless God, unless the potter, by the power of the potter, the power's in his hand to save, not yours, not mine, not religion. The power is in the potter, in the maker, in God himself. By his power and by his power alone. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit says, the Lord says God. You must be born again of the power of God, the power of the maker. He must recreate you. That's what Jesus means when he talks about being born again. You must be born again. Jesus says so. The Bible records it. I believe it. So do all his people. You must be born again, says, says Jesus, by the power of God, by the power of his spirit by the power of the potter it's down to the potter his power he must put it forth or you remain just as you are dead in your trespasses and sins alienated from god from the life of god no life in you just a miserable sinful existence that's all then you'll breathe your last and you'll close your eyes in death and you'll open them the other side and you'll behold the judge of all the earth and he'll cast you into eternal unquenchable flames in that day it's appointed unto man once to die after that comes the judgment so i bid you today or rather god does not me god the potter himself he commands you he says repent ye and believe the gospel he says, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. He says, God now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. So repent. So turn. Turn ye, turn ye, turn ye. Why will ye die, saith the Lord? But you can't. But you can't. Unless God imparts grace to you. Saving grace. Repenting grace, believing grace. Cry out to him. Get on your knees, Dundee. Get on your knees and cry out to him. Go home and shut your doors. Nail them shut if you have to. And get on your knees with an open Bible and cry out to him. And don't get off your knees until he comes to you, until you know that you've been forgiven until you know that you've been reconciled to God, until you know that he has imparted grace to you, saving grace. Today, today, not tomorrow. Today, if you shall hear his voice, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Harden not your hearts as many many have done in the past and many do in Dundee today harden not your hearts no sir that's been removed by Jesus that's in your eye 
I said, you're right, go away and be quiet. Get your, get your back, get your back to your corner and be quiet. So like I say, friends, on your knees, cry out to God that he would have mercy upon you and impart the power, the energy, the dynamic to you to be able to do that which he commands you to do and that is repent and believe the gospel. Because believe me, God has the power to save, but he also has the power to destroy. Men, pardon, can't hear you. No, you have to repent of that as well. That's an abomination to God. He'll destroy you. He'll destroy you if you don't repent and believe the gospel. So he has the power to save. Oh, believe me, he's mighty, he's powerful. I mean, he created everything. He's the potter. He formed you. He can do with you what he pleases. He can save you or destroy you. It's down to his will, not yours. But he's got the power. He's got the power. He, he, made the, he made the world. He made the universe. He made all creatures great and small. He made you. He's done, he's done acts of destruction before. He destroyed the world in Noah's day. Eight, only eight persons were saved by the power of God. The rest of them, all of mankind, were destroyed by the power of the potter. By the power of God, he destroyed them. He brought a flood down, flood up. The waters came up and the waters came down and he flooded the world and they were destroyed. And then there was Sodom and Gomorrah, the Sodomites, you know? Your homosexuality, because of their abominable practices, God destroyed them too. The cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. He rained down fire and brimstone on them. He destroyed them. He's got the power to destroy the world, nations, countries, and even, even cities, even cities and individuals, people who make those cities up. He's got the power to save, but he's got the power to destroy. Be careful in your complaining and carping, Dundee, about the preaching of the gospel that would happen save you if God was pleased to do so. Be careful he doesn't destroy you, that he doesn't strike you down right where you are now. But one day, if you don't repent, one day if you don't, by the grace of God, repent and believe the gospel, he most certainly will. Nobody just dies. Nobody just, nobody just breathes the last and go, goes out of this world. Their time is in God's hand. Your time is in God's hand. The day has been appointed when you'll breathe your last. It's been appointed of God. It's appointed unto man wants to die. God will come for you. He'll send the grim reaper to wrap his slimy fingers around your soul and draw it from your body and return it to God who then will judge you and will cast your soul into eternal, everlasting destruction. Why? Because you're on the pathway to destruction now. You're on the broad road that leads to destruction. You were born on that road. You were conceived. You were born on that road. And you travel that road right to the end until God, until the potter who made you, who formed you, destroys you everlastingly, eternally. You're on that pathway already. And the only way off of that pathway, the only way off the broad road to destruction is to enter in at the straight gate. In other words, you must be born again and travel the narrow pathway. But again, you don't want that. Only by the grace of God can you get through the straight gate. 
Only by the grace of God can you travel the narrow pathway. Only by the grace of God can you get to the end of it, eternal everlasting life. Only by the grace of the potter, unless he gives it to you, imparts it to you sovereignly, his good pleasure, not yours. But you could. You could do what he commands you to do. You could cry out to him. You could seek him with all your heart. You could repent. You could believe. That's what he commands you to do. Yes, even though you can't, even though you don't want to, he still commands you. And he will hold you responsible one day for having been commanded and for you not having done it and for you not being able to do it. You are thoroughly and absolutely accountable. You are what you are because God has made you what you are. You're either a vessel for honor or you're a vessel for dishonor. You're what the potter made you and your destiny has already been, already been formed, predestined, predestined to eternal everlasting life or eternal everlasting death. What will you do with the gospel? What will you do with Jesus Christ, whom I declare to you here this afternoon? One of two things. One of two things. You'll either fall down before him, worship and adore him, turn him from your sin, cast yourself upon him, love him, worship him, believe in him, trust in him, or the other thing, you'll crucify him all over again. Because every time you hear the gospel, every time you hear God's saving message and reject Jesus Christ, reject the only Savior, the only one who can bring you back to God, the only one who can get you through that straight gate, down that narrow pathway to life, the only one who can save you from your damnable state and condition in sin, Jesus Christ, you reject him and you crucify him all over again. And thereby double your damnation. That will be the end of you. He has the power to save and he has the power to destroy and he will destroy. Are there many, many be saved? The disciples asked Jesus. He didn't answer the question, but seems to me the, uh, the answer is obvious. The answer is quite logical. Only a few. Only a few that enter in at the straight gate. Only a few that find it. Only a few that find it. Where is it? Your wicked gate. How do I get through it? How can I? Desperation ought to fill your, fill your hearts and minds. How can I get through that straight gate? Broad road that you're on that leads to destruction. Eternal destruction. Vessels of dishonor. Is that what you are? God will destroy you. The one who made you, the one who formed you, he'll destroy you unless you're saved. Except you're born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Same thing. By the grace of God. Saving grace. The power of God's grace. Grace, 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 amazing grace. You sing the words, but you don't know what they mean. Huh? You sing the words, but you haven't got a clue. You're clueless as to what they mean. I once was blind, and now, now I see. No, you don't. You sing the words, but you're still blind. Oh, it is amazing grace. It is astonishing grace. That God that God should have mercy on any one of us. But he has his chosen. He has those whom he has chosen before the foundation of the world. 
He has those who will hear, who will listen, who will take heed, who will take it seriously, who will seek and find, who will repent, who will believe, who will be saved. He has his own. You one of them? My sheep. My sheep, they hear my voice and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Are you a do are you a goat? Are you goat? Goats? Uh, 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 goats? Uh, is that what you are? Stone death. Stone death. As well as gay. Don't look very gay to me. You look like miserable sinners. Ah, uh, death is posts. Goats. They don't hear his voice. But my sheep, they hear my voice. They follow me. I give unto them eternal life. They won't face destruction in that day. They will get a they will get a welcome. They will get a well done, my good and faithful servant in that day. When they breathe their last, when they close their eyes in death and open them the other side, they'll be welcomed by the Savior by Jesus, who died on the cross for their sins who shed his blood on that cross to take away their sin, to take away their guilt, to take away their shame, their blame, to take the curse of God, the wrath of God from off of them. That's what he came for. He came for his sheep, only his sheep, the vessels of honor. He came for them, only for them. And he searches for them and he finds them and he brings them to himself by grace. Not their wills, not their choosing. His grace. And he supplies them with everything. All that they need to get through that straight gate, down that narrow pathway, all the way to life eternal, everlasting. My sheep whom I died for, whom I gave myself for. You see, he has the power. He has the power, the wonder-working power, the power to show mercy. But how can he be merciful for, towards sinners, guilty sinners, like myself? How can God be merciful to sinners who have rebelled against him, cursed him to his face, blasphemed his name how can he be merciful to them because somebody else has taken their place because somebody else has taken their sin jesus that's what he came for that's what he died on the cross for he died for the ungodly ungodly sinners that they might be the recipients of god's mercy that's what Jesus came for. That's what he was sent for. That's what the Bible means when it says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave him up to the death of the cross to take away the sins of his people so that he could show mercy, so that he could be just and justify the ungodly. His law his justice intact, you see? Oh, God can be merciful. God has the power. He has the power to show mercy, but only, only to the sheep, only to those whom he has chosen, only to those whom he wills to show mercy to. So you see, God, God can be merciful because God has done this wonderful thing for his people. God has sent his, his only son, his very best, into the world to be taken by the wicked, cruel hands of men and nailed to that cross to shed his blood so that a, a vile sinner like me could receive the mercy and the grace of God. That's what Jesus was doing on that cross, suffering, bleeding, and dying. So that that 
so that sin could be taken away from those those who repent those who turn from their sin those who believe on the son of god those who put their trust in this person the person of jesus he alone can bring the mercy of god to you he's the only mediator he's the only one who can fix you restore you bring the mercy of god to you jesus one mediator between men and god not the pope of rome not muhammad but jesus j-e-s-u-s jesus is his name a wonderful savior he brings mercy the mercy of god and the power of his mercy to sinners lost ruined and undone on the pathway to destruction eternal and fetches them by his grace his powerful grace he fetches them off that broad road and brings them into the narrow pathway that leads to life and how does he do that by giving them because god's a giving god he loves to give he gave his son he gives mercy he gives gifts to man he gives the gifts of repentance the gift of faith it's all gift 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 all by god's grace his free grace and all the sinner has to do is what? Reach out the hand of faith in humility, receiving the gift offered. But if you reject it and continue to reject it to the end of your course, the end of your earthly existence, well, then he'll destroy you eternally, everlastingly. But if by his grace, you receive you believe on his name you will be welcomed into a heavenly mansion to dwell with god forever saved from destruction eternal destruction saved from the flames the fires of hell salvation salvation by the sovereign grace and power of the mighty potter the maker the creator the triune god father son and holy spirit the sovereign god who made you and gave you his being for his glory and he will have glory from you one way or the other he'll either be gloried in your damnation our glory in your salvation I call upon you today command you today as God's ambassador repent ye and believe the gospel repent ye repent ye repent ye Dundee repent ye and believe the gospel for the kingdom of God is at hand You'd like to have a copy of God's written word. It's offered to you freely, no cost, no obligation to you. You're simply the only father taking. I have Bibles, I have New Testaments, I have this Gospel of John. Read for yourself and see that these things are so. You must be born again. If you've got a question, feel free to come and ask it. And if you would like somebody, maybe perhaps, to pray for you, I would be more than happy to do that also. May God bless you, Dundee, and of mercy, mercy I see upon your precious, precious, never-dying souls.